couple of weeks ago I did a review of the Achan Smart Garage Door Opener and they also asked me if I want to review their Smart Infrared Remote Control as well and I said yes because I haven't used an infrared remote before and also because it actually uses a different uh, home automation system as, as an environment, a different ecosystem. So it's not the EV-Link application, but it's something called the Tuya Smart. So this video is going to be new for me, both because of the devices in you and also the, uh, the system or the environment it's using is new. Therefore, besides focusing on the features of this infrared remote, I'm also going to briefly talk about this Tuya Smart application as well. The model of this device is SANT slash IR slash 1 and as you can see it comes on the in this um, nice box. Basically just says that this is a Wi-Fi e infrared universal remote and it supports 50,000 plus cloud IR codes. So that sounds very promising. As you can see it's a cylindrical device and of course it works with a, a mobile phone app which allows you to send infrared signals from this device and it works with Amazon Alexa, Google Home and IFTTT. In my opinion, one of the great uses of these infrared remote controls is that you can control your AC with them. And while unfortunately I don't have air conditioning in my house or not the kind of um, infrared remote control or air conditioning unit, so I won't be able to show the you that I have a few infrared devices for example my TV I have a small uh, compact hi-fi set and also a set top box which was provided by uh, my provider who provides internet and TV and and uh, telephone as well so I'm going to use them to showcase the features of this device so as I mentioned before the device looks like this it's a really small one very lightweight and uh, there is a central section which probably houses all the electronics and a big acrylic bezel and uh, you can uh, probably see a lot of LEDs all around this bezel inside so ideally it should you know transmit the IR signals into all direction and have a really good coverage and also there is like a blue LED so you get some status as well also in the box you get a USB cable it's a normal USB plug and on the other side it's micro USB uh, socket and you also get this um, uh, pin device which is used to press the reset button on the top but I guess you can just use any pointy device if you lose this one and the only other thing you get in the box is a user manual and again the user manual is I think it's quite uh, um, well it explains the basics and and also it has the QR codes for this Tuya Smart app that you can download for from the Apple Store and Google Play Store and it gives you a few you know steps how you set up a new device and also how you can train an unknown infrared device and a couple of examples how you can send commands from Alexa and Google Home just like with the garage door opener the only thing which is not included in the kit is a 5 volt or a USB power adapter so you just have to supply something which can deliver 5 volts 1 amp on a USB socket. I placed the device on the top of my couch because that's the only place where I have mains power for the USB, a charger and also good view of the TVs and some of the other devices that I have. The first thing I've done is I've downloaded this Tuya Smart app and interestingly if I remember correctly the, the QR code on the box actually takes you to a website uh, which downloads the APK, APK file which I didn't think it's really really safe especially that you can find the Tuya Smart app within the App Store as well um, so I've just gone ahead and downloaded the version that is on the App Store which you can see here on the screen once you have installed the application, you have to go through a registration process where you would use an email ID or a phone number uh, to start registering uh, for a new account and then you will get a confirmation email or probably like a text message um, and then you can set up your password. And once you have done that, then basically you are in the application. The only thing which I've, I've found specific to this Tuya Smart, which I haven't seen on, on other applications, is that not only that you can define rooms but you can also define different homes so which is actually quite nice because if you are using the same app to control 
um, you know, of lights or anything in your home and also your holiday home or your second home, then you can just use one main application and switch between the different homes. And uh, well, I only have one home defined. You can see there's a home management, so probably you can have more. And once you do the home, then again, you can uh, define various uh, rooms, which is a very similar feature that you see in other apps as well. But it's actually nice that you are sort of forcing you to think about rooms because uh, we will see that, that once you uh, register a new device, you have to place it in a room and it just makes more sense. And I guess in the long run, it's going to create the, um, a more structured look within the application. So here we in the app, we have in the in home and now we are going to pair this device. As you can see, there is a blue status LED. Now we need to add a new device. And I think this process is going to be pretty much the same as uh, we have seen, for example, for EV Link. So I add a new device. And here, even the, the document says that I have to select the other, but there is also here a, a device which is called the infrared transmitter. Let me just find that one. Infrared universal remote control. And now I need to set it to pairing mode. So I use my spe special device and I click the reset button. I hold it for, I think about five or six seconds. And now maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but this blue LED here is flickering. So I just confirm. Now you have to provide your Wi-Fi address and the password, confirm. And then we just wait until this device gets paired. Okay, so as you can see, the device is added successfully and well, I'm just going to leave it a smart IR and I'm just going to say that this is in the living room and then complete it. And once the app refreshes, well, you know, I've been playing around with this so it already knows my TV. So let me just delete that. So we start with a clean page, but that's basically what you start with. So you have a, the smart IR, actually if I go back you can see it's in, in the living room. And when you click on it you get this separate black screen where you can specify all your infrared devices. The first device that we are going to pair is going to be my main TV. It is definitely not a new TV, it's probably already 10 years old now but I think it's going to be a great test just to show that even if something is old doesn't mean that it cannot be controlled by a new technology so I'm just going to um, pick add to add a new device and now we see a list of oops a list of different devices and you only get six so you can have setter boxes TVs air conditioning boxes fans and DIY I'm not really sure why they have picked these categories um, well, sort of the area that I live in, we usually don't use a lot of fans and they are definitely not uh, remote controllable. And I don't know why there is a separate set to box and the TV box category. And I, again, don't understand why we don't have some other categories like hi-fi sets. I think those would be a good candidates for TV control, as, uh, sorry, IR control as well. So, not sure about all these, but, um, well, this is what you have to work with. So, let's start with the TV. If you select any of these categories, um, the system is going to uh, load all the supported devices. And I'm not going to go through this because I'm not sure if you can screed, see the scroll bar, but this list is absolutely huge. I mean, look at this. I'm scrolling and I'm only at B and C and D. So there's no point looking at the exact list because it's absolutely massive. So I would be surprised if you can find the TV which wouldn't be supported by this infrared con remote control. So instead I'm just going to use the uh, ah, damn. The, the search function and uh, store, uh, search for Philips. And if you have used universal remotes before, you probably know that even if you select a particular band, brand like Philips or Sony or Panasonic, the, the devices within that brand are usually uh, using various different infrared standards, not standards, but different if infrared codes. And exactly the same is happening here, because now you can see that you are presented with a, a remote control layout, and then it shows that you need to test with a couple of different buttons, because obviously the, the app wouldn't know which particular TV you have. And instead of selecting from a long list, what you have here is that 
you try this one and if it doesn't work you click on this not work next button and it's going to give you the next Philips remote and the next Philips remote you probably and then you probably have to try you know five or six uh, different ones until you find the one which works for your set which takes just a little bit of time and I think it's much more user-friendly than you know going through a second list of uh, Philips TVs so if I click on the power button actually my TV comes on so I was lucky because I got the first one so what I can do now is I can click on work properly you can see a TV comes on there's nothing going to be in the TV because and I have a separate set top box so uh, in the app I'm going to uh, click on work properly and now I have the screen so I have my most useful items in here you can see I'm pressing the volume up and the volume down I can change channels and it's actually quite responsive. I haven't really noticed any lag between pressing the button on the, uh, in the app and actually seeing the response on the device. And if I click on OK, yeah, I have the list of channels and I can click on sources. And for example, I can go to HDMI 2, which is my Chromecast. So you can see my Chromecast screen. So it works, I can easily control my TV from my phone. And yeah, by the way, this is daytime, so there is a lot of glare in the TV, but I guess you get the idea. The other thing I have uh, just below the TV is my set-top box, which I'm using TCOM. So this is the uh, something which was provided by TCOM. There is not a lot of branding on it, because it's mostly like T branded, but it has uh, a part number which says TTI something. And after a little bit of Googling, I found that it is manufactured by a company which is called the Tatung Technologies Incorporated or something. So I couldn't find TT, TTI in here, but I could find Tatung in the list. So let's try with that. And as you can see, we have a couple of different variants. Unfortunately, I can't see how many. And this app doesn't support landscape. So I'm just going to, you know, try to power it on. So I'm just click on the power button and the channel buttons that the setup box doesn't seem to be responding. So I'm going to click on this not work next. And now you can see it's, uh, you know, number two of something. And again, doesn't work this one either. So next. And doesn't work this one either. So it's number four. No, not really. You can see our red status LED. That should turn to green once it turns on. And now we are back to one. So this is an example where you can't find the code for this particular device. So, well, it, unfortunately it doesn't work. As we can see, uh, picking this particular device from the list doesn't work. So we are going to use the DIY option here to train a new unknown device. So as you can see on the screen, you just have to point the device or the remote uh, close to the, the this receiver. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go very close, the universal remote. Okay, I click on next and Please align. Okay, I've done that, I think. And, and, okay, that's that. So, that would be the, sorry, the on signal. And let's say continue DIY. And then, and that's number one. And then, That's number two, like channel one and two. And that's three. So let's save that, that much. What I figured is to rename this DIY device, you have to come out to see the list. And then uh, next to the name, there is an edit icon. So I can just rename it to set. How is it spelled? Set to box. Okay. So within my set-tops box, I'm going to click a couple of buttons. So if I click on on, 
and we can see that the signal was sent out because you can see there's small red dot next to the name set top box so I can do on well it doesn't work and even if I turn it on manually and I'm just going to press some of the number buttons like one or two and three I'm looking at this, uh, the, the screen on the TV now and nothing changes. So even though it seems that it has learned the codes because, well, the screen responded as soon as I pressed the button on the remote, it probably didn't learn the entire code or didn't learn it well enough or it uses a different modulation or something so it doesn't work. So, well, but that's infrared. You don't really get a lot of response. It either works or not. So unfortunately for this device, even the DIY option didn't work. Next what I'm trying to do is to train another DIY device and then at least we can see if we can uh, define separate uh, or multiple devi DIY devices because that's an old hi-fi set that I have and also has a remote so I'm just going to select DIY, I'm going to line up the, the remote and everything and yeah and that was the on button so let's teach that and then maybe what should be the next uh, volume up okay uh, sorry yeah volume up and that was volume down And what else? We should do CD. And then maybe the next one should be maybe to switch to tape deck. Okay. That's fine. I think that should be enough. So let's save that. I'm going to go out again and change the DIY to name to Hi-Fi. Okay, that's good. You can see the Hi-Fi here. It happens to be a Philips as well, but that shouldn't make any difference. It's like an old free CD changer. We don't really use it often, but well, if you want to recent radio or CD, then we have it. So let me try to turn it on. And nothing. Oh, well, that's a bugger. Hmm. Okay. I don't think I will be able to show you much in here. And of course, I can, you know, I'm pressing all the other buttons as well, and nothing really happens. Let me turn. Oh! Sorry, I was wrong. Something has happened. So let me use the on off button again. Okay. Uh, but that's it's in tape, so let's change this. Okay, well, it is working. Sorry, I was wrong. There is something with the CD, uh, sorry, with the turn on and off, because I'm sending the on and off signal and it doesn't seem to be working. So maybe something wrong. Well, it's not able to identify the on off one, but seems to be working fine for some of the other buttons, so I can. Change the tape, so yeah, it's plain tape, there's no tape inside. And I can do CD, and well, I should be able to, you know, play CD, but I haven't <coughs> trained the play button. And then, let's see, volume up. Yeah, volume up works. And volume down works as well. So again, you can use this DIY option to train any other device, which is, you know, not listed in the, in the few main categories. So that's a success. There are a few options in the app itself to control the device uh, using voice comments. So there is a microphone icon on the top right and if I click on that it says please enable microphone permissions in the settings app list. Which is strange because if I go into my app settings or app permissions and if I select microphone and if I scroll down to your smart it's enabled. So I don't know why it is not doing that. And also there is within the settings, so you select me and then settings. And yeah, it sounds and push notifications enabled. There's nothing else here. 
So I'm not sure why it doesn't work, but I do have a Google Home device. So if you download the Home app uh, for Android, and probably there is a, a similar one on iOS, then you can see that I have a, a Google Home and I have a couple of Chromecast devices as well. But <clears throat> let's just click on Add because we want to set up a new device. So you do set up device and then here you select works with Google and now you can set up new different accounts, external accounts. If you scroll down here, then you find this Tuya Smart, which is probably, ah, I probably should use the search. Tuya, yeah, Tuya Smart. And now you have to go through the process of linking uh, this Tuya app or account to your Google account. So in the next step, you authorize and you should be able to see your new devices under your home. Okay. And I can select my TV and edit to a room. Let's say it's in the living room. So now I have two devices in the living room. As this TV appears uh, as a plug, I'm not sure why, but hey ho. And at the moment, I'm struggling to set up any new devices. Uh, uh, from the Tuya app. I mean, it definitely sees the TV. It doesn't see the other two devices, which are the other DIY infrared devices. So that's going to be, well, that's a little bit disappointing because I won't be able to control them via, you know, voice comments. But we can try the TV at least. Hey Google, turn off the TV. All right, turning the TV off. So it definitely works. The TV is off. Hey Google, Turn on the TV. Sure, turning on the TV. And I've noticed that, I'm not sure why this is happening, but turning off the TV works without any issues, but turning it on doesn't work for some reason. If I go back to my Smart Tuya app, and if I go here, I pick the TV, and if I pick on off, well, it doesn't work. It used to. Okay, now it works. So it doesn't seem to be working for the first one. But maybe just, just because this TV is old. I'm not sure. Hey Google, change the TV to channel 1. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. Yeah, and I'm guessing this is happening because this uh, the TV is at the moment is recognized as a, a wall plug device. It's not like a TV device, so it only understands on and off and that's a little bit disappointing because even the leaflet says that you should be able to switch channels and you know turn volume and that sort of thing on your infra devices but it doesn't seem to be working for this one and as I said in the beginning unfortunately I can't show you the air conditioning but again just like with the TV uh, the list here is absolutely huge so I would be very surprised if you won't be able to find your air conditioning here so if I select this one and again you have to go through the separate type of uh, process here where you would have different uh, remote options even for the same manufacturer and you have to select the one that uh, works with your unit and as you can see you can do the turn off and the turning on changing temperatures and also uh, the fan speed and you know heating and cooling so all the features that you will get on the remote you can probably access here. Maybe not the programming ones, but the main features. And remember that air conditioning units, unlike TVs and hi-fis, uh, when they send a signal, not, not only they send an on signal, but in every single air conditioning signal, everything about the air conditioning unit is sent. So when you click on temperature, for example, for example, if I click on this temperature one, the the unit is sending that I want 90 degrees I want in let's say in air supply mode and then medium fan and you should be on which makes it really really easy for automation because if you try to set up an automation for a TV to, uh, to turn the TV on then it will turn the TV on if the TV is off but if you, the TV is off, then it's going to turn it on. So that's not going to be really useful. And hence, I'm not going to go into the smart features too much because, well, I just don't have the device to test it with. But you can add some uh, easy scenes and automation. For example, you can have an automation where the execute action 
is that something happens on the air conditioning or the TV or the smart IR. Oh, uh, again, you can see here that I only see TVs, I don't see the other DIY devices. So that's a little bit disappointing. So you can, you know, set it up so that the uh, uh, on TV switches off or, you know, changes volume. Not really useful to be honest, but air conditioning, you can switch the air conditioning off. And that should be a nice automation to automatically turn off the air conditioning if you know that you will be out of the um, out of home and even if you forget to switch it off this uh, Tuya Smart is going to switch it off for you. I hope this review wasn't too long and wasn't too boring for you especially if you know Tuya Smart app already well some of the things that I've said probably uh, going to be straightforward and wouldn't be it wouldn't have so much information for you but um, that was the first time for me, so I had to cover the basics well, for myself and probably for the other viewers as well who are using this for the first time. As you can see, there, are, there has been some mishaps with my particular devices and well, that's probably the nature of the IR is that it would probably work for many, many devices, but there you could always find devices for which it wouldn't work. But still, I think it's a nice addition to any home, especially when you want to uh, control some old devices for which you don't have the remotes anymore. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.